Welcome to this week's show as we head to South Dakota. We're going to be outside of Faith, South Dakota with some friends of mine, Cody and Denise Wire. Now they run a cattle operation on a ranch that's been in his family for generations and they also do some guided hunts. They are miles and miles away from any town and this is a place where neighbors help neighbors. They keep God and their family first and towns actually get smaller. This is all brought to you by Off Power Auto Group. So go by and check them out at hautogroup.com. In this fast paced world we live in, I like to take the road less traveled. I love small towns that haven't changed in years and ranchers set in their ways. Back road driving, small town dining, long dusty trails, and horses fast as hell. Windmills and palm jacks, so hey, forgotten Brian. town. How's it going, man? Good. What are we going to do today? Like it? Load of steps, stars light up the ground. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the final event. We're going to go out and try to get some hogs. Dream whistle blowing, can't you hear that lonesome sound? Keep <laughs> on rolling through the darkness, moving through your town. We're going to be in Fairfield, Texas today. If you would like to help out another wish kid, go to westernwishes.org. Oh, now drinking old crow whiskey, don't mean that you can fly. We're in Burt Burnett, Texas, we call it an epidemic. You never know what you're gonna get. The cowboy way of life is still alive and well, and I want to take you along for the ride. Visiting small towns and ranches with some of the best people you can find. Now, to me, this is country. Hey guys, we just got out here to the ranch and uh, Cody, we just rode out with Cody and the family just checking cows and uh, I want you to talk just a minute about this and what this does and uh, kind of our routine of what we're doing right now. Well, we come out and check these fly roads and stuff this time of year. The flies are really bad and uh, these cows get bunched up and they don't graze very good and which means they don't put pounds on very well either. So if you keep the flies off their back, uh, that helps them grow and be healthier and they don't get dust pneumonia by keeping in a pile and all that but uh, my neighbor here he built these which are really nice uh, they're just a tank holds about seven gallons or whatever but we put some um, some fly stuff in there uh, that they'll go go underneath these jeans and which is a good place for a, a old pair of jeans just kind of hang them on that rod and they push that rod up and and it kind of puts some of the fly stuff on there and grips on there and then they go under it keeps the flies off their face and off their back and just gotta check the nipples make sure all these little bitty buttons under here are uh, 
dripping good so when they do go under there and they're using it and they're over here on the dams and as you can tell there's still flies on them so it's a good thing we're doing what we do just to keep half the flies off of them I guess so checking water and checking mineral and trying to keep the health up on the herd for a good healthy quality herd to, to feed the world. And then we uh, brought some cake out and the girls got to uh, feed the cows. The cows come up and I guess that just keeps them kind of coming up and coming around yeah. and calm. Yeah, that cake, hand feeding cake or corn or something like that, kind of gives them a little bit of a treat. Yeah, it keeps your cows really calm so that way when you're working them on foot and stuff, they're not wild or anything like that. It keeps the calves calmer so when you go to wean them and what have you, the calves aren't running and bouncing off trail fences and they get used to people walking through them and hand feeding them, so, yeah. And it's really good for the kids to uh, be out here and experience this. Not everybody gets to do it, so uh, I'm really excited that the kids got to come and be part of it and see all this. It's beautiful country and good people. All right, well, we've been out uh, checking cows and we saw a few muskrats in the pond and I'm gonna let Cody tell you what they do to these pond dams. Well, muskrats to us, uh, out here they're kind of uh, more like a rat to us than anything else in the dam. Or mice or anything like that, they'll tear up a, a dam grade uh, which we build out here to stock water for our cattle. And uh, what they'll do is they'll just they'll dig these little trenches in these dam grades that we build and uh, they'll just dig a hole right in the dam grade and then when the water fills up they'll just wash these dam grades out and then you lose all your water and your stock dam for your cattle and what have you and, and it's, just, it's just a bad deal. Well they say home is where your heart is Where all of your faults are part of where you sleep safe and sound and spend days around The ones that you're in love with When I'm missing home And you wonder where I go I'm right here You can look me up, I'm probably in some rundown truck Love and light on the road I spent 24 hours down in Austin Two stepped in San Marcos I ate chicken and waffles with my friends in Houston Met a girl in San Antonio Played debutante balls out in Huntsville I saw Pat Green play George's ball and I buried my path ball in West Texas, and I love my Texas home. They said, boy, you should move out to Nashville, make records and buy fancy new clothes. But I've worked way too hard in my own backyard to not taste all this fruit I've grown. If they ask you where I've been, they can figure it out on their own. They can look me up, I'm playing and I so wish me luck with this gig and life on the road. I spent three days and nights down in Austin, two steps in San Angelo. I ate chicken and waffles with my friends in Houston. Kissed a girl in San Antonio. Played debutante balls out in Corpus. I sang wagon wheel at Old Green Hall. All right, we're back out here for day two, and we've got the horses. So I am excited to go out there and ride through the cows. Tell us what we're going to do. Well, we're going to ride out through these cattle and uh, check them for herd health. Uh, just kind of ride through them like a fine tooth comb and make sure we don't have any pink eye issues, uh, dust pneumonia, foot rot, um, kind of that sort of stuff, I guess. A guy needs to do that three, four times a month. and Just to make sure your herd health's good and, and uh, 
cattle are doing good. This is my prairie. This is my home. No man can stand here and all die alone. Well, they can drill naked mine on my smoldering bones. This is my prairie. This is my home. The water is poison. My calves are all dead Children are sick And the aquifer's bled They want a big pipeline Right through Pops Grove But this is my prairie And this is my home Can't blame the riggers for the guys driving the truck. The feeding the families and making a buck. But take a close look at the stock that you own. Cause this is my prairie, and this is my home. Don't got money that lawyers can buy. I don't got my own government's laws on my side. But I got this old rifle that my granddaddy owned. This is my prairie. This is my home And I'll make my stand here And I'll die alone Well, they can drill a naked mine On my motoring bones and This is my prairie and This is my home Well, we just came in from checking cows and we are in Denise's kitchen. Usually this is a segment where we go into a little small town eating at a diner or a cafe. We're miles and miles away from any town, so we're gonna show you what she is known for. And uh, this is beef off of their ranch here and you're doing chicken fried steak. What, why did you pick chicken fried steak? Well, I picked chicken fried steak because you brought my main hunter. Yep, so we gotta make some chicken fried steak for, for Hunter. Yeah, and then tell us also what, what you're doing here and uh, what your secret recipe is. First I like to soak it in a wash of eggs in milk, or half and half, or whipped cream, whatever. Stretch it again and flour. Got a good coating of flour on it. And another good coating of crushed up crackers. Now guys, she cooked for us. I had another TV show and uh, they do guided hunts here. So she's the one that does all the cooking for all the guys in camp. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it's good stuff. So we're gonna get to taste this. I'm gonna show you how it's made and you're gonna wish you were trying it as well. All right, well you can't have chicken fried steak without gravy, so tell us what you're doing here. 
I just put some of the drippings from the chicken fried steak in a pan with some butter. And add some flour. Make a rouge. And then after this, what we do? And then I will put some milk in it and boil it to a stick. have some cauliflower with our chicken fried steak and what does it make vegetables taste better than some cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Alright so uh, as you guys seen we just totally had the best chicken fried steak ever. Denise, always slaving away. Thank you. You betcha. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming out. Good stuff. And if you guys ever book a hunt out here, then you will get to have some of her good food. I sit down at a park bench watching my children play when this old timer took a seat he said hello how's your day I said to tell you the truth sir i shouldn't be here doing this between the headlines and the deadlines i've got no time to reminisce that's what he said sounds like you're a busy man son that ain't front page news he said once upon a time i was wearing your brand of boots so listen up I've gone the wrong way, I've learned the hard way, babies crawl, then they walk, before you know it they're driving away, as you're staring at the tail lights, you can feel life passing you by, it goes zero to sixty in the blink of an eye. He took a picture from his wallet that he carried throughout the wall of the beautiful brunette he married in 1944. He said, my angel flew away. It's almost been five years. And he told me her name. Then he wiped away his tears. Then he said, take a look at your little girl. Enjoy that little girl's smile. Cause one day you're gonna turn around. You'll be walking her down the aisle, so listen up. I've gone the wrong way, I've learned the hard way. Babies crawl, then they walk, before you know it, they're dropping away. It's just staring at the tail lights. Well, we just uh, come out here and rode in the arena after a good chicken fried steak dinner. Girls, did you have fun? Yeah. Yeah? We got to go around some poles and some barrels, and uh, weather's perfect and a beautiful sunset been a good day. So catch your many blessings, love with all your heart and hold on tight. Better cherish every morning and hit your knees every night. So I said, Lord, I've gone the wrong way. I've learned the hard way. We live, we die. The years fly by like white lines on the highway. Slow me down and make me see The kind of man I need to be Zero to sixty Life goes zero to sixty The old man said I've gone the wrong way I've learned the hard way Babies crawl, then they walk Before you know it, they're driving away As you're staring at the tail lights, You can feel life passing you by It goes zero to sixty in the blink of an eye In the blink of an eye Well, Cody,
Cody and his family have been here in this area for a long time, and it's neat for me to ride around with Cody and hear stories of his dad and granddad and uh, things that they've done in this area ranching and, and the way that they did things. Uh, times have changed just a little bit, but Cody's still carrying that tradition on, so just tell them how long your family's been here and a little history on the ranch. Well, we've been here, uh, it was homestead in 1918, so uh, next year, 2018, it'll be 100 years has been in the family. Uh, I'm a fourth generation and uh, we run a cow-calf operation. Uh, things have changed a little bit, got to diversify. Uh, so we've got a hunting business also, c and Outfitters, and uh, my wife works uh, with that. Uh, that's our off-farm income. She does all the cooking and, and cleaning for that, and then I do all the guiding and do the hunting side of it. We've passed by that schoolhouse several times, and uh, it was neat today to get to actually stop by there and uh, and see it. But tell us the history with the schoolhouse. Well, the schoolhouse is on our land, and uh, as far as we know, it's we don't know exact year, but it's early 1900s is when it was uh, built. And uh, my grandmother went to school there for a few years, and then uh, taught there at a very young age, I think she was 15, when she started teaching there. And, uh, and her uh, sister went there also. And then my dad and his three sisters also went to school there. So. And then not far from the schoolhouse, uh, just down the road just for a little bit, uh, it's another old home place where I think you said that your dad had grown up and you had actually lived there for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that would have been my great grandpa's uh, place there. Originally a little log cabin, and, and then they kind of built on after that as, as money and, and time needed. Again. Well, we also went and uh, checked out their church, and kind of a cool story there because that used to be a town. It's Marcus uh, was the town that was there, and uh, you guys go to church there. We went and seen the church, and um, not so much anymore. But tell us, tell us about that. Yeah, it used to be a, a big town, you know, for this community, I guess, back in the old days. Uh, they used to have a bank and a grocery store and stables and, uh, you know, it, quite a bit of stuff going on there. Now with technology and automobiles and this and that, you know, you can get, get further, so all these little towns are kind of dwindling, so now it's, instead of being, you know, 10, 15 miles from each town, now they're 30 to 100 miles apart, and, and uh, that's just kind of where the highways have went, and this and that, and, and job opportunities and what have you. So yeah, it used to be a big town, now it's just a couple older buildings that we still use, like the church and the community hall. And, I know you've got to be proud to uh, to be here and making this all work, and you know today. Yeah. Oh yeah, because times have been challenging. There's no doubt it. Agriculture has been tough, and uh, it's not as many people into it, or the big guy gets bigger, and the little guy, you know, either makes it or he's got to have off-farm income of some type, you know, be diversified more, you know. So, yeah, it's it's been a challenge, but we've been blessed too. There's no doubt. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. We had a great time. I'm glad my kids got to come along. A huge thanks to Cody and Denise. I think the country way of life is something that everybody should be able to experience, and I'm glad that we got to show it to you. If you would like to come out here and do a hunt, go check them out on their website, cdoutfitter.com. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.